The simplified checklist that we put out on our info hub at Hockey New South Wales was all about getting a shared responsibility in returning to hockey. So we were adamant that we didn't want to give the responsibility to associations or clubs entirely. We wanted to make sure that all of our members and participants acted responsibly in a return to hockey, be it uh, via level uh, B or level C. So the idea there uh, was to make sure that all of us uh, took took responsibilities. Some of the key features of the checklist had to do with social distancing, hygiene, sanitising self and equipment, as well as uh, ensuring that the attendance register is completed so that we have some um, uh, contact tracing uh, ability uh, if there was a positive test. We end up with four checklists. Uh, there were individual checklists, club checklist, association checklist and coach checklist. The individual checklist was about raising the awareness of individual responsibilities, but also the responsibilities of clubs and associations to get that shared, shared understanding. The club checklist is one checklist that we've asked to be returned to Hockey New South Wales. Uh, of that will be about 330 clubs returning their checklist, indicating uh, that they acknowledge their, their responsibility as part of the bigger picture in returning to sport. But it also we've asked in that checklist to identify COVID uh, safety contact. That person is purely a contact and we can speak to them or send them resources if we need to um, or updates to plans as required or changes to government um, uh, restrictions um, so that clubs um, are updated in relation to any of those uh, changes to restrictions. The association checklist went out to everyone as well and we were trying to get across there that the executive within the association have some responsibilities around providing a plan for us to approve at Hockey New South Wales but we wanted the whole community to know what the volunteers primarily were doing to get the sport up and running in their local environment. So we were supporting the associations by letting everyone know this is the role that their executive have to undertake. There may be consultation required about the facilities and uh, that everyone should be there to assist them in getting that document ready to be sent to Hockey New South Wales for approval. The fourth one was the coach checklist. The coach is critical in this level B, particularly around the training phase, to ensure that the plans are implemented from hour to hour, day to day. And we needed to get out to the coaches and sort of alleviate some of their concerns about what their responsibilities were. So we gave them some guidance in relation to what to do pre-session, what to do during session, what to do post-session, and the types of things they wanted to try to ensure uh, were maintained during a training session, i.e. social distancing, physical distancing, where we can, hygiene and sanitization, plus the attendance register. This gave them, or will give them confidence to run a training session, but they are the key to ensuring that our initial steps into returning to hockey uh, were successful. For us, each sport, association, club and team must take a cautious approach. Hockey New South Wales has been unashamedly promoting the fact that we've taken a very cautious approach in relation to our return to hockey. The other key uh, tips is to keep promoting the physical distancing and, and good hygiene. Uh, and also most critical is once the plans have come into Hockey New South Wales, for example, to be approved, the associations need to ensure that those plans are implemented and that they're monitored and changed as required. We've stressed with the associations that we're not going to be policing that um, because we've taken the approach that it's a shared responsibility. And even to a degree, the associations don't need to do that because they should be getting across to their members that we're all in this together and we all need to make sure that these control measures work and you need to be a part of the solution to get us back to hockey. So, so the control measures must be implemented, but if there's any changes that are required, from feedback from coaches or participants or community members about what they've seen out at the hockey field and on a particular day, um, some action or some changes need, uh, need to be made there. We built the individual checklists and club checklist and uh, association checklist to get the shared understanding of the responsibilities around doing, doing the right thing. What we've also provided in uh, our info hub in relation to other resources is templates around 
how to run a training session, what drills need to be, can be run that are uncontested, maintaining that physical distancing, uh, the coach's role, as I specified earlier with the coach's checklist, but we've provided ideas to coaches about how they can set up their drills and um, still maintain those key features around uh, preventing the transmission of the, uh, of the virus. Um, it also negates the need for strict supervision uh, by the plan authors uh, who are the volunteers in most situations. So the simplified checklist and the links that we have to the resources available to our whole community alleviates that pressure or the perceived pressure by the COVID safety coordinators in each of our associations about their roles and responsibilities um, because uh, more broadly, everyone has the roles and responsibilities to ensure um, that we uh, don't promote the transmission of the virus as we are all doing in our day-to-day -day life. It goes without saying that it's obviously important that we do it in a safe way. And this is why New South Wales has taken a, a cautious approach to this. Um, the first thing I would say here that it re-engages the volunteer base. They do such a fantastic job and, and hockey particularly uh, full of volunteers as are many, many other sports. So we get those volunteers back and um, get, them, get them working in an area that they're really passionate about. Um, and yeah they will get these uh, they will get the energy from working within this hockey space hockey space again uh, the return has to also be sustainable um, as, uh, as i mentioned earlier you might have a plan but you've got to make sure it's implemented you've got to make sure it's monitored and a lot of what we're doing through level b of the aas framework will move into level c and stay with us uh, forever and a day um, the engagement of uh, teammates in the broader community. I know many people that uh, get energy from making connections and contacts with other people. And through training and playing, you, you get that engagement. And through that engagement, you, you get this re-energized self uh, happening. And that energy is something that we may not have experienced over the last uh, two to three months because of the isolation around this. And, and that's going to be fantastic to see out there. And I think there's plenty of people out there that really do um, uh, need that contact so that they can be energized and, uh, and participate more fully within the, uh, within the community. That leads on to a more positive mental health um, uh, space, uh, sport, it can be underestimated in relation to that, uh, that physical activity, getting the blood running, the heart pumping, um, apart from the enjoyment, just the physical uh, uh, activity of playing sport is critical to some people's mental health. You know, they can't live without it and uh, everything flows from that positivity. So that positivity goes on to other people and, and, and so on and so forth. So. Um, we end up with a happier community. Uh, finally, talking about community, sport brings back this sense of community. You go down to any park on a Saturday, Saturday morning, open field, council ground, there could be 24 teams playing at any one time, the canteen's open, it's a sunny day, and, uh, and there's just this sense of community and we feel safe. Uh, generally speaking, around the sporting spaces, um, we feel safe because there's people there for the right reasons, doing the right things. And uh, that sense of community is really, really important. Um, and that is, uh, sport can often be the center of that community uh, in a suburb in Sydney, out west in New South Wales, up on the far north coast or down on the far south coast. Um, sport plays a huge role in bringing the community together. So I hope, um, uh, my answers uh, have helped you out in some way, but uh, the overall picture here in Hockey New South Wales is a cautious approach. We've got fantastic volunteers working in associations and clubs doing the right thing and getting their plans into us. We're approving those those plans, they're being implemented. And then we've already seen people out on the uh, fields training and, and playing soon. So I um, hope everyone enjoys their sport and stay safe. Thank you.